How am I going to get this finished for Amy before the 745 carpool? If only Mom hadn't stopped by last night. I know she's lonely since Dad died. So what could I do? Well, I guess I'll just be late to work again. you had a meeting. Sherry Phillips. Oh, Sherry, thank goodness you're there. Hi, Michelle. I don't know what I'd done if you'd already gone to lunch. It'll only take a couple of minutes. Psst. Greg came home really mad last night. He said the meanest thing to me. I'd had a bad day and I was just so upset. I... Oh, well, let me tell you about my day and my week. Of course, you don't care because you never ask. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. That we're not. And I knew something was wrong this and morning because when I made him his breakfast, he did so sad. Goodbye, and he left me usually at least. I try not to make him see what happens. I just, I just, I want to yell at him, but I, I don't know, I don't know how to tell him the things that I feel because he just blows up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm praying for you. Yeah. I'll call you tonight. Bye. Hello, Sherry Phillips. Yeah, Sherry, Dan here. Uh, your phone's been busy forever. Listen, I know you're swamped, but I really need you to go over these proofs by tomorrow. Client wants to meet at 8 o'clock. Uh, you can make it, can't you? Yeah, okay. Thanks, knew I could count on you. Hello? Sherry, I am in deep water. Margie was going to be the activities coordinator at the retreat, and she's now just canceled. She says she's just overloaded. Anyway, can you take over for I don't know, Phyllis. The weekend of the 20th? We were planning a family getaway that weekend. Not for me. That's the weekend of the concert. Yeah, and I have soccer. I'll be happy to help. Oh, thank you. Just send whatever Margie's done, and I'll get working on it. What's the theme, anyway? Oh, it's great. You'll love it. The joy of sacrifice. Great. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Dr. Henry Cloud, and I talk to people like Sherry all the time. Sherry is trying to live her life the right way. She's trying to do a good job with her marriage, her children, her job, all of her relationships, and her Lord. Yet it's obvious that something isn't right. Life isn't working. Whether you're a man or a woman, you can undoubtedly identify with Sherry's helplessness, her confusion, her guilt, and especially her sense that her life is out of control. Sherry suffers from severe difficulties in taking ownership of her life. She isn't able to draw and maintain boundaries around what is hers, boundaries that would help keep out what isn't hers. You know, in the physical world, boundaries are easy to see. You've got fences and signs and walls, moats with alligators, manicured lawns and hedges. Those are all physical boundaries. Despite their different appearances, they give the same message. This is where my property begins. Now, the owner of the property is legally responsible for what happens on the property. Someone who doesn't own it isn't responsible. Well, in the spiritual world, boundaries are just as real, but often harder to see. The goal of this session is to help you define your intangible boundaries and to recognize them as valuable tools for living a healthy life. Boundaries keep us from taking on things we shouldn't, helping us not get overcommitted, and eliminating the stress that goes with that kind of busyness. Boundaries free us to love other people so that when we're loving them, we're not resenting them at the same time. Healthy boundaries mean a life in balance and the ability to care for yourself and when and where appropriate to care for others. Boundaries define your soul and they help you to guard it and maintain it. You know, just as homeowners set physical property lines around their land, we need to set physical, emotional, and spiritual boundaries for our lives to help us distinguish what's our responsibility and what isn't. As we see in Sherry's struggles, the inability to set appropriate boundaries at appropriate times can be very destructive. 
Sherry has great difficulty knowing what things are her responsibilities and what aren't. And in her desire to do the right thing or to avoid conflict, she ends up taking on or owning problems that God never intended her to take on. Let's look at some of them. Her mother's chronic loneliness, her boss's irresponsibility, her friend's unending crises, and the list goes on. Sherry also fails to take responsibility for herself, her poor choices, her non-existent limits, her unhappiness, and this list goes on too. What causes such weak boundaries or boundaries that don't exist at all? Well, a variety of things, past hurts, poor models, and sometimes misunderstood Christian teachings. Whatever their root, it's easy to see that Sherry needs clearly defined boundaries, and so do you and I. Boundaries define us. They define what is me and what is not me. A boundary shows where I end and someone else begins, leading me to a sense of ownership. And healthy boundaries are what we'll be working towards in this session and the eight to come.